I always get asked a lot, what is the best laptop to buy in 2024 for that 700 to $900 range for people who like to do schoolwork or office work or even some base professional work. And my top recommendation would have to be the M1 MacBook Air. Now, even though this laptop is a few years old now, it still will probably get the latest updates up until like 2027. And right now of the current version of Mac OS, Mac OS Sonoma, it still runs like an absolute champ. It's handled everything needed to done it well. And even with the battery health aging, it still lasts me throughout the day. So it's still an amazing laptop, even now in 2024. I've been using this laptop as my main school laptop for the past few years. And I've been doing a lot of work on this, like Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, all those types of office stuff. I've also used this laptop too for video editing. So I do a lot of 1080p video editing and it handled it very smoothly. I haven't noticed any issues, but I do have the upgraded 16 gigabyte of RAM model. So if you are like using this as like a professional video editing device, you know, you may want to consider getting like a used 14 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, but for the hobbyist video editor who's editing 1080p footage every once in a while, this is going to be just fine for that. Games on this too also run pretty well. So I was able to run Minecraft on the base default settings. I get like around 90 frames per second on average. Uh, that obviously does go up as you, you know, download mods and stuff to make the performance better. But this laptop too also runs a lot of mobile games really well. So because this uses a mobile chip technically, uh, you can run some iOS games on this computer. Uh, one game that I like to play is Asphalt 9. Uh, that obviously supports it and a few other iOS games and Apple Arcade games are also supporting this as well. Another thing I wanted to mention too uh, with this is storage. So this comes based with 256 gigabytes of storage, which, you know, if you're just using it for web browsing, documents and stuff, it's gonna be just fine for that. But if you're like backing up a ton of photos on here or doing like video editing and like moving large files and stuff, it's not gonna be enough and you may wanna consider getting a different laptop that has a lot of storage. Uh, I would recommend if you do need more storage, like 512 gigabytes, for example, to maybe look at buying one of these used just cause you're gonna get a much better price uh, used for more storage than if you were to buy new. Another option you do have to with storage is to use an external hard drive. And that's what I do. So I have an OWC portable external hard drive that I use to edit videos off of and I do a lot of work off of and it's worked absolutely great for that and it had really any issues and I have Velcro to strap on the back of my laptop but that's probably the one hassle with it is it's kind of a pain to carry around but it saves me like hundreds of dollars on storage so that's another thing I can consider for those people who need a absolute ton of storage. Now one thing I'll mention too is because these are a few years old um, batteries, they do lose, you know, capacity as they age. So if you are buying this on the used market, it's probably going to be around 85% battery health, likely to 90% battery health. Uh, my current MacBook Air, I bought it in like April of 21 and it's at 85% battery health. I haven't noticed it being an issue because the battery health on these are so good, but in order to get the full 15 hours, Apple advertises uh, with screen on time you're gonna have to make sure you get a new one. So that might be one reason for you to opt in for like a new one, which is between like eight to 900 on Amazon over like a used one that I can find for six, 700. Another thing too is with batteries, if you do wanna get replaced at some point, it is $160 to replace. Uh, so that's another thing to keep in mind too. But if you do wanna pick one of these up, either used or new, I'll go leave links to both of those in the description. Now enough blabbering about the specs, let's talk about the design. So this MacBook is really lightweight and that's what I really liked about this is because when I'm going to classes and stuff, I really want a laptop that is light and easy to carry around. And this laptop has been really good for that even with a case. Another thing too is it has this like wedge shape to it. So like if you're typing on your lap or you're typing on a desk, because it kind of wedges down like that, it makes typing a lot more comfortable uh, which you don't get on the newer MacBooks. And then on the sides, you get two USB-C ports. Unfortunately, that's the only type of port this computer really has. 
Um, you can get like a little dock or a adapter that can connect like USB ports to and HDMI ports to. And then on the newer MacBook Airs, you do get like a MagSafe deal. So you can like charge magnetically, which can also free up a port. Uh, but this doesn't have it. You still have to charge it using a USB-C cable. And on the other side, you have a headphone jack if you want to plug in wired headphones. And then on the sides of the laptop, you have speakers. So those speakers sound absolutely amazing and they're really good for like, you know, just vibes and stuff like that uh, for studying for me. And then with the keyboard area, uh, the keyboard has like this little firm tactile feel to it. I don't really know how to explain it, but it's really comfortable to type on compared to a lot of laptops I've tried out there. Uh, there's like one millimeter of key travel, which some people find that pretty firm. However, for me, I found it just right and I'm able to type very fast with this compared to most other keyboards. Uh, the keyboard area too does have a Touch ID fingerprint reader, uh, which you can use to unlock your computer, uh, which is really handy for when you're in a rush. Moving on to the display part, uh, this computer can only support one external display. So just keep that in mind if you need more than one uh, display, you're gonna have to get like a 14 inch MacBook Pro in order to do that. The display, like on the computer itself, it has this thing called P-Free Wide Color Gamut. Um, for a lot of you, that's not really gonna matter, but for the photo editors out there, uh, that is something that's really nice because that means this display displays more colors than like a typical uh, LCD display. It also has a thing called True Tone, and this might apply more to the average user out there. But what True Tone is, is it adjusts the white balance of the laptop screen to match the lighting of your environment. So let's say you're maybe indoors and you have like a bluish LED light next to you. The screen will adjust that color temperature to match with what it should be like to your eyes. Now, in terms of some things people don't like about this display is probably one, the bezels. So the bezels is that black part that goes around the display. And some people think it looks kind of thick, especially when you compare it to like the new M2 MacBook Air. And then on the top, you have a webcam. I'd say the webcam quality is like decent enough for Zoom meetings, but it's not really what I consider professional. Uh, there is an option to like, you know, connect external webcams and to also, if you have an iPhone, use that as a webcam. Uh, if you have like a mount or somewhere to set it, but the webcam quality I'd say on here is like mid at best. Next, I'm gonna go talk about something that I don't think is really mentioned in a lot of reviews of this laptop They think a lot of people should know about, and that is repairability. So if you break something on this laptop, like the screen for example, it's gonna cost hundreds of dollars to replace it. And I just looked up my part cost for like these laptop screens and stuff. Our cost for like the screen is $300, which is insane. So I can't imagine like if you go to Apple or these repair shops, they're probably going to charge you like $500 for a screen repair or, you know, if you break the top case and stuff like $600. Just keep in mind, like when you're buying this, may consider getting a warranty or a case because if you break like your laptop screen or the keyboard or like the chassis of the laptop, you practically total the laptop and it loses pretty much all of its value. Now you might be wondering, Okay, compared to the M2 MacBook Air, should I just get an M1 MacBook Air or go up to the M2 MacBook Air? And I would recommend the M2 MacBook Air if you do have the extra money, just because it is gonna last you like in the long run an extra year or two, but also it has a more modern updated design and the bezels that go around the computer have made it so that uh, because they're thinner, you do get an extra 0.3 inches of screen real estate which can make it almost a 14 inch display. I think it's like comes to 13.6 or something like that. Uh, you also too get MagSafe charging, which can be very handy um, in case like you trip over the laptop, it's not gonna drag down the laptop with it. It also frees up a NAR port as well, but it's up to you. You are the one who makes that decision. Is it worth the little bit extra money to spend on it? I will say you can find like a used M2 MacBook Air now for about $900. And then new, I just checked on Amazon yesterday and I saw some going new for about $1,080 on Amazon. So I'll also have links to that in the description as well. But anyways, that concludes this video. I hope it kind of helped with your decision on uh, if you should get an M1 MacBook Air now in 2024. 
Uh, I am gonna leave another video up on screen. It's things to test before you buy a used MacBook. I think a lot of you can maybe find it really helpful. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and goodbye.